Every morning, millions of African farmers wake up to another day of grinding poverty. We're all familiar with the stories of despair. But inland from Mombasa on the Kenyan coast is a tale of hope. Here are seeds of change which could help transform the face of Africa. In the Kimbunga Hills near Mombasa, Carissa is waiting for the rains. It's been one of the driest of dry seasons and his farm is parched. Carissa's crops won't start growing until the drought ends. Only then will he know whether his family has enough to eat. The rains offer promise, but they can also destroy this fragile land. Farms around Kimbunga have been badly overgrazed, and in the last few years, torrential downpours have washed much of the precious topsoil away. Mm. Like many African farmers, Carissa seems to face an increasingly barren future. But just a few miles away towards the coast is proof that even the most damaged land can once again bear fruit. It all began 40 years ago, when ecologist René Haller was handed what must have seemed mission impossible. Limestone quarrying for the local cement works had left behind a vast lunar landscape. The cement company asked Haller to breathe new life into this wasteland. But how? The bedrock was hard and full of mineral salts, and the groundwater was made highly saline by the nearby Indian Ocean. This was one of the most hostile places that Haller had ever seen. A miracle was needed, and a miracle he found. When I found this tree, after walking for months in the, in the desolated landscape, it gave me a lot of hope. And I thought there's a possibility to grow something here. The casuarina was one of the few trees that could grow in the rough rock. But there was a problem. Their tough needles just built up on the quarry floor Haller needed something that would turn them into soil. And then he found it. A local millipede that thrives on casuarina needles, a diet which would poison most animals. This humble invertebrate's droppings would lay the foundations for a fertile soil. Haller introduced hundreds of them into the ranks of the casuarina trees, and they began their work. It was just the first of many trial and error experiments which have turned the wasteland into this. No high-tech fixes were needed. No pesticides or fertilizers. The greening of the quarry was down to careful observations of how local plants and animals interact and support each other. It had cost very little, but in Haller's mind it begged a million dollar question. How could the lessons learned help the plight of local farmers? The Haller Foundation was set up to support Dr. Haller's work. An experimental farm plot was created on the same scale and facing the same problems as the farmers at Kimbunga. 
Even after a four-month drought, the plot remains productive. Farmers from all around Mombasa have heard about it, and many are keen to pay the few shillings it costs to attend the Foundation's field school course. Kamisi shows how it's done. The main ground rule is nothing goes to waste. A small pond can have a chicken coop over it. At night, the poultry remain safe from predators while their droppings fertilize the water below. The pond is stocked with a few tilapia fish, which breed easily and are a good source of protein. Nile cabbage acts like a water filter, keeping the pond healthy. It spreads like a weed, but can be harvested constantly and makes good compost for the rest of the plot. The water from the pond, heavy with fish and chicken droppings, does wonders for crop yields. With just a few pieces of discarded plastic, Kamisi has created a wormery. Worms and millipedes turn kitchen and vegetable matter into rich compost in no time. Age-old techniques are also rediscovered. A natural pesticide can be created using bark and leaves from the versatile neem tree. The Foundation's model is a simple but integrated system which requires no fancy equipment, just common sense and patience. The farmers are encouraged because it's all small scale. But can Carissa and his neighbours apply what they've learned back at the Kimbunga Hills? Gabriel is the Halla Foundation's representative at Kimbunga. He knows that a slowly, slowly approach is the only way. First, they must protect what little soil is left. He helps Carissa to find the contour lines of the slope. They then dig horizontal trenches to put a break on the rainwater so that it soaks into the soil and stays there. With this change alone, Carissa is confident that his crops have more chance of success. Kibibi is one of the community leaders, and she also attended the training. Impressed with the fish farming, she has begun work on a series of ponds around the area. She has encouraged the whole community to pitch in. Neighboring farmers see the changes. Many of them stick with traditional ways, but the small improvements are trickling through the hills by word of mouth. The most dramatic and successful of these has been the communal low-maintenance dam. Women haven't had to trudge for hours to find water, so they can put more energy into growing things. Next to the dam, where the soil remains moist, cow peas continue to flourish, even in the drought. Halla believes that real change begins at the grassroots. Uh, up here, actually, we have the poorest of the poor people. It's, uh, it's the fringe of Mombasa, and we cannot actually uh, tell them what to do. Our principle is seeing is different from being told, and we are trying to, to, to give examples to the people. Uh, the fish, the ponds, uh, water catchment, uh, contour lines which we are doing, it must come from them. If, I, if we tell them, do this, you know, it will never happen. You know, but it comes from them. We, we built a community hall. Their request was suddenly, couldn't we have a kindergarten out of it? And another one came, couldn't have a little shop? So they get this shop, they pay a certain amount uh, for it, which goes into the community uh, box again. So that's the, that's the economy which you start in a slow scale. The kindergarten isn't just essential childcare for mothers working in the fields. It's a way of teaching the next generation good habits for the future. Each child is given a discarded tyre to turn into a micro-allotment. It's their contribution to the family meal. These tyres would otherwise be breeding grounds for malarial mosquitoes. So this is a double blessing. Back at the demo plot, Kamisi and his team have become masters of finding new uses for what most people regard as junk. With just a few cows, 
This remarkable scrap heap challenge converts fresh manure into biogas. Channeled through recycled bits and bobs, it's a low-tech source of sustainable energy. Even the slurry is valuable. Odorless, now that the gas has been removed, it's diverted into an island plot where it feeds banana and papaya trees. Hidden among the vegetables are snails, which in turn become food for the fish. In Halla's mind, appreciating wildlife is a central part of turning people's livelihoods around. The foundation supports a local nature sanctuary, which offers a unique experience to thousands of children. Its education center offers teaching resources, a well-stocked library, and an outdoor cinema. As the future custodians of the land, it's vital that these kids understand their environment as well as their ABC. Rehabilitating rural Africa will be no quick fix. The Halla projects need your help. By giving to the foundation, you will be planting a seed of change, helping to kickstart a sustainable way of growing food. A little money goes a long way because it goes directly to the farmers, and they have to be the ones taking the lead in restoring and maintaining their land. If people can see direct benefits in managing their farms differently, then long-term solutions to poverty become possible. Dr. Haller's work has been recognized by the Eden Project in Britain as one of the 12 most effective rehabilitation projects in the world. It has already inspired a similar project in India and could be a blueprint for other parts of Africa. This community is lifting itself out of a hand-to-mouth existence. For Carissa and his family, food security is now possible. With the support of the Halla Foundation, they've discovered that ecology and economy can work together, rather than wrenching each other apart. That solutions to problems can lie right on the doorstep, and feeding your family needn't cost the earth. Mm. 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 Mm.